Okay, we're now broadcasting. Okay, welcome to the special uh, meeting of the closed session for the Series City Council. This meeting will be held in accordance with Executive Order N29-20 issued by California Governor Gavin Newsom on March 17th, 2020. Again, I'm assuming I'm supposed to be reading this, that the Ralph M. Brown Act uh, and the Federal Americans with Disabilities Act. This meeting will not be physically open to the public. All members of the public may participate and comment, well, actually uh, not for the closed session. Um, at this time, um, I've opened up our regular meeting, but we are actually going to closed session. So um, at this time, we'll ask for the roll call, please. Council Member Condit. Here. Council Member Durosset. Here. Vice Mayor Rhino. Here. Council Member Klein. Here. And Mayor Vieira. Here. Okay, so now we will um, adjourn to closed session, and then when we get through with closed session, we will uh, restart the regular meeting. Yeah, Mayor Vieira, just one item to note that um, item number three on the closed session agenda will not be discussed this, this evening, so there'll be nothing to report out for that item. Okay. And we do need to check real quick to see if anybody wanted to comment on the closed session items. Okay. Is there anyone listening or um, watching on Zoom that would like to comment on the closed session items? I do not, not see, see any hands raised. <clears throat> What was that, Diane? There are no hands raised. We have one attendee and no hands raised. Okay. We will go ahead and um, move to closed session now.
Uh oh. Diane. Diane, can you yes. hear me? Yes, okay. Vice Mayor. I have um, on my big screen, it says Siri City Council meeting is in closed session, but then the smaller is some of the people. So does that go away? And then it's going to, oh, or do I just. Yes, it, I'm sharing the screen right now. So since okay. I'm sharing my screen with this okay. note, right. it should resolve itself. All right, thank you.
So are we all set, Diane? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, the city council has just uh, ended our closed session. So I wanted to come out and um, turn it over to our city attorney to, uh, to report out anything, if there was any reportable items. You're muted, Tom. Pardon me. Uh, no reportable items other than direction to staff, Mayor. Okay. All right. With that, we will um, move back to our regular meeting, and um, I'll go ahead and read the initial um, statement as well. <coughs> this meeting will be held in accordance with Executive Order N-29-20, issued by California Governor Gavin Newsom on March 17th, 2020, the Ralph M. Brown Act, California Government Code Section 54950, and the Federal American with Disabilities Act. This meeting will not be physically open to the public. All members of the public may participate and comment via the application Zoom. Zoom meeting information and call-in information was posted on the agenda and in the city and on the city's website. Remote public comment is also available by emailing the city clerk at cityclerk at ci.series.ca.us. The city clerk will read your comment into the record during the pu public comment period. So at this time, um, let the record reflect that we've already taken roll call and all of the council members are present. So with that, we will move to the invocation by Pastor, is it Jim Gianosa? Did I get that right? Have you unmike, uh, unmute your mic? Should be on the lower, there you go. Uh, you got to close, Tim Gianosa, but that's right. So, uh, well, thank you for uh, allowing me to be with you tonight. And I uh, just want to thank you for all the, the work you're doing and everything you're, uh, uh, all the different ways you're pouring into the city. Um, I will get to be a resident of Ceres in about two weeks. So uh, I'm excited. We just bought a home there and we're looking forward to moving in. So, right. so it's good to meet you guys in this, uh, in this manner. So I appreciate everything you're doing. Let me start by just reading a... Uh, a, a very short uh, uh, verse from the Psalms. And it says, God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and mountains crumble into the sea. Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And um, we take great comfort in that there is, uh, there is one whose strength is our refuge. So let me pray for us. Father, thank you. Thank you for the uh, men and women that are represented here. Thank you for the high call that you've given them to lead such a great city. Thank you for the way that you have uh, given them wisdom, and you will continue to give them more wisdom. Thank you for the way that they seek advice and counsel, and, and uh, they've used the years of experience and wisdom that you've given them to, uh, and the knowledge and the training to lead the people of the city. That you have given them a, a passion for things that are right and good. And you've given them a passion for keeping people safe and helping them to prosper. And Father, you've given them a passion to keep harms, to keep harm away and at the doorstep. And so Father, 
and give them even greater discernment and even greater wisdom that they have. It allowed them to see that which is on the horizon and that which they, the decisions they need to make that will not only be profitable, but will care for this city in an even greater way. Father, we're in uncertain times and we don't always know what's around the, the next corner. And so as they make decisions and choices and plans, again, may they have a wisdom and discernment that seeks to be beyond them. And so Lord, we thank you for those that are out there on the front lines. We thank you for our police and our fire and our rescue. And thank you for those that are, that are interacting with the city and the people in, in, a, in a very face-to-face, -face, hands-on way. Thank you for our healthcare workers. Thank you for our, um, Father, all, all of those that interact with the people of this city and of our county. Thank you that they have offered to give themselves to that, to that end and to sacrifice themselves. We thank you for the families to sacrifice themselves so that they can lead and care for others in the way that they do. And so, Father, would you bless this city? Would you, would you give it great prosperity? Would you give it safety? And would you keep helping it to rise up and to be leaders in the midst of the other cities of this county? And that they would show a way and pave a way that others can follow. And so, God, as they, as they meet tonight, may you give them all the wisdom and blessing that they need. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Okay, next, we'll move to the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have no presentations this evening, so we will move to citizens' communication to the council on matters not included yeah. on the agenda. While well, the city council welcomes and encourages participation in city council meetings, adopted rules allow no more than five minutes for expression of non-agenda items. Matters under the jurisdiction of the city council and not on the posted agenda may be addressed by the general public. However, California law prohibits the city council from taking action on any matter which is not on the posted agenda unless it is determined to be an emergency by the city council. Citizens are uh, entitled to address the city council on any agenda item subject to the five minute provision. Uh, public comments will now be accepted through Zoom. For those participating through the web, please raise your hand to request to speak. It's the hand icon at the bottom of your screen. If you are participating by telephone, please press nine on your phone. The city clerk will call your name in the order that the requests are received. When it's time for, your for you to speak, the city clerk will unmute your microphone and the city clerk will provide the name of each person that has requested to speak. Um, so at this time, uh, I will ask the city clerk if we have any public comments. Yes, Mayor. Um, I see Dave Pratt has his hand raised. I will unmute his mic. Uh, can you hear me? Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes, all right. Well, third try, I guess, I guess we made it. Uh, Dave Pratt is series. I just want to know who own, owns the rights for more road, city or, or county? Who has the rights for more roads? Yeah, does the city, yeah, is, is the series responsible for more, more road or, or oh, more road? More road. Yeah, along the canal. Do you know, Daniel, is that, I mean, I believe part of that is, is ours, if not Yes, um, so with the recent annexation, Tom, you can help me out also, um, between Whitmore, somewhere like in the middle, between Whitmore and Roding Road, um, the north half of that, or approximately the north half of the road is the cities, and the south half um, from that point that I mentioned to Roding is the counties. And I don't know if this has to do with our Whitmore project right now. We have more road closed off. We asked our contractor to get an encroachment permit with the county. And the county said they would leave it up to us to um, decide that and that they weren't, um, they didn't really need to issue an encroachment permit. So um, I don't know if that answers your question, Mr. Pratt, or if you have uh, a follow up. Uh, basically, I'd like to see. Uh, uh, 
speed bumps put along Moore Road. Uh, right now you have it closed off at Whitmore, but they they go uh, one street over over and they speed down that. Uh, people from Houston and, and Eastgate. And once you open that back up, they'll start speeding down that. Uh, they they drive fast when there's a bunch of traffic. They, they do they do not go to Mitchell Road. They go all the way. They drive as fast as they can down Moore Road. And a lot of times they don't even bother if they feel they can. They don't even have to stop at the stop signs. They just keep riding going until they get down the service road before they get on Mitchell Road. And I don't blame them, but uh, uh, it's there's too much too. Uh, when I was going for my bike ride, I, I, there, there was one German Shepherd. I, I, um, I um, you know, uh, uh, greet going through there, and I found out uh, somebody run um, run over it. Finally, um, it happened to get off the off the property, uh, and and the owner there says sometimes they're doing about a hundred miles an hour down that street. So is, it, is that something that you can work with um, Daniel and Chief Weiss and just make sure that we look at that? I know obviously speed bumps um, present a little bit of a challenge for emergency services. So anything that we want to do, whether it's rumble strips or something, I mean, but can we just kind of take a look at it and see what might be able to do in that situation? Yeah, and I think that uh, once the improvement done that uh, Mr. Padilla mentioned along the uh, Whitmore side, that's going to change the look of Moore Road a little bit. So we can certainly look into that. Okay. Thank yeah, you. So basically, I think I'm going to talk to the county, seeing how part of that is the county, uh, seeing if they could uh, uh, put speed bumps down that. It's ridiculous that the people, people, they, they, re I understand why, because Mitchell Road at times is backlogged because the, and so they try to avert the traffic and, and, and they go, they take side streets and they don't slow down. They don't even slow down in my area, down Fowler, and they got extra stop signs. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council on a non-agenda item? Mr. Yakeley. Let me unmute Mr. Yakeley's mic. Your mic is now unmuted, Mr. Yakeley. Can you hear me now? Go ahead, Jean. Yeah. Okay, I, I just want to uh, touch bases on what I... Uh, uh, was asking last or last um, council meeting, and I addressed uh, Mayor Vera and and uh, the city council and uh, Mr. De Martini about what the county is doing uh, to try to get the uh, merchants in the area to try to conform to a mass type situation entering stores and businesses. Uh, has anybody? Uh, heard anything from the county on that? Uh, I'll let I'll let Mr. Westbrook address that when we get to the last um, item. I think he's going to give an, a COVID-19 discussion, a verbal report. Okay. And yep. one of the other things too is uh, uh, code enforcement still out there? Working every day? The three uh, people on uh, code enforcement, are they still working every day? Yeah, yes, they're working every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've had a problem in our neighborhood. And it just, you know, again, it's the mentality of a small majority of people live in this city. Uh, they live like rats, you know. There's a pile of probably 150 feet away from my home that just keeps getting bigger. Mattresses, furniture, exercise equipment. And then a few days later, there's something else dumped there. I called in, I know, I don't know if they're on a schedule or, or what, but yeah, I guess uh, you counsel people that drive around and go different places during the day, you see a little bit more of this garbage uh, increasing in some areas. But uh, this, this whole pandemic thing, I believe that it's gonna just put us back further where we made some room before, and now it's gonna be even harder. That's it. 
Okay. All right, is there anyone else? No one else, Mayor. Okay. I did receive a comment via email. Okay. Um, and I'll read that now. The comment is, hello, May Mayor Vieira, city council members and series residents. My name is Megan Mizuno, the librarian at the series library. While the library building is currently closed to the public, I would like to list the services and resources that are still available and the new ones that we have created to continue serving the series community. San Jose County Library is offering modified services, including telephone reference, book recommendations, and no contact holds pickup. You may request the items online or you can call 537-8938 to place your request over the phone. We are not currently accepting materials for return. Due dates for checkout material have been extended to June 30th. Our modified hours of operations are Monday through Thursday, 12 to 6, Friday, 11 a.m. to 5, and we are closed Saturday and Sunday. All of our regular e-resources are still available to you, including Hoopla Digital and Cloud Library. Some additional e-resources have also been available while our buildings are closed. Please visit our website at stanislauslibrary.org for a full list of resources. We are also providing additional content on the Stanislaus County Library Facebook account, such as Wiggle Worms, Bilingual, Pre-Story Time, and Bedtime Story videos, and are currently being, are currently being posted weekly. There is also a weekly online coding club. Additional content will be offered throughout the summer. So be on the lookout for announcements on our website and social media platforms. A modified version of our annual summer reading challenge will begin on June 1st, June 1st through August 1st. Please keep an eye on our website and social media platforms. If you have any questions about our services and how to access them, please visit our website or call 537-8938 during our hours of operation. Thank you. Thank you. There are no other comments. Uh, we will move to appointments to boards and commissions. Uh, we have none this evening. Conflict of interest declaration. Is there anyone on the council that would like to declare a conflict of interest on any of the consent calendar items? Okay, uh, hearing none, we will move to the consent calendar. All matters listed on the consent calendar are considered routine in nature and will be enacted by a single motion unless otherwise requested by an individual council member or the public for special consideration. Otherwise, recommendation of the staff will be accepted and acted upon by roll call vote. Uh, I do know that item seven has been requested to be pulled. Uh, so correct. yeah, correct. Item... Mayor, we're just yeah, we're just gonna push that to the next uh, uh, next meeting on May 26th. Okay. So at this time, is there anyone on the council that would like any of the consent calendar items pulled for further discussion? Item number 11. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, is there anyone in the audience that would like an item pulled other than item seven or 11? Okay, I see no hands, so. This time I will uh, bring it back to the council for direction on the other items. Move to adopt one, two, three, A, four, five, A, B, six, eight, nine, and 10. Second. Can we have a motion and a second? Can we have the roll call, please? Council member Condit. Aye. Council member DeRosset. Yes. Vice mayor Rhino. Yes. Council member Klein. Yes. And Mayor Vieira. Yes. Motion passes 5 0. Thank you. Item number 11, resolution number 2020 42, approving a Fifth Amendment to the agreement with Ontel Security Services Inc. to provide private security for facility rentals and to patrol city parks and authorizing the city manager to execute the amendment. Councilmember Condit. Thank you. Uh, Mr. John Warren, who is a constituent in District 1, reached out to me. He was unable to uh, get his Zoom working, and uh, he was also unable to contact the city clerk via email. So he asked that I ask these questions on his behalf. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Westbrook, if you can answer Mr. Warren's questions, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, but Mr. Warren was just curious how many uh, Ontel security guards uh, are there and how many are on duty at a time? Um, 
if we're talking about like an event at the community center, generally it depends upon the attendance of the event. So um, I think that generally a minimum of two guards, there can be up to four or five depending upon the events. Um, in terms of the patrol of the parks, Jeremy might want to help me with this. I think that we have one uh, on-tail security guard that patrols uh, the parks in the evening. Is that correct, Jeremy? That's correct. And they patrol all the parks, one. I'm... They, they patrol the parks that are listed. So um, okay. generally the parks that have our restroom facilities because they're going to be locking those. Um, so those are the parks that are uh, patrolled by on-tail. Okay, that was also one of his questions. And he did want to know, do they carry a firearm? I believe our contract allows for that. Yeah, yes, it does. Okay, well, those were Mr. Warren's questions. I appreciate that. Um, okay, does anyone on the council have any uh, other comments on this item? All right, is there anyone in the audience that would like to comment on this item? Okay, I see Mr. Yakely. Mr. Yakely, your mic is on muted now. Yes, yeah, so on that same issue with uh, security. Uh, when there's events there at the community center, uh, sometimes I don't see anybody there. In terms of security, Mr. Yakely? <laughs> Yes, sir. Um, for the events, um, generally there's going to be somebody always required, especially if there's alcohol that's going to be served. Um, if there's not alcohol served, the number drops um, or it depends on the types of event. Sometimes they're public ev or private events. They're not open to the public and they're not required to have security. But, but like in the evening time too, when there's uh, people picking up their kids and, you know, there's some I guess I assume some kind of activity for the kids, even on Saturdays and stuff like that. I've been in there. I don't see no security and, and you know, with the state of the union or the world, uh, you know, how are we protecting these people and they're in a city environment? Yeah, those, a lot of those classes and some of those events that happen at the community center are not required to have security. It's usually your larger events, whether it be a wedding reception, a birthday party, an anniversary or something like that, um, whether it's a crab feed um, that the Lions Club and the Rotary do, that's when security is provided. But for our normal classes, um, we are not providing security. Doesn't that leave a window open for the irregular bad people? I'd like to answer that. Um, sir, we've not had any issues really here at the community center compared to other agencies I've worked with. We're very fortunate to be located close to the police and fire department and city hall. Um, so we haven't. Um, we're very blessed and very lucky. Well, just like one of the officers told me a long time ago, you can pick up the phone, but it's going to be a split decision what's going to happen to you because we can't get there exactly when you need us. Most In agencies. That situation, you need some help. I just, find, I just find it very vulnerable for any situation. If there's an event there, maybe they should put in there that they're going to have to pay for security. I don't want to see nothing happen there, but it sure looks like it could. Most cities don't provide that security during our regular programming hours. Again, we do provide security during rentals. So yeah. if a private renter is using the building, they will, we actually usually double our security compared to most other agencies. In my opinion, the city council should, with the, the times we're in and the way the world's twisted, I think that we should consider or you should consider as far as city council and making some improvements there somewhere to safeguard those people that don't realize what the possibilities are for their children being in some of those situations. It needs to be addressed somewhere closely, not way down the road. Thank you. We can address that. Mr. Woodbrook, when we go through the budgeting process. Yeah, the, the, the downside to providing security for classes um, absent any events is it'll cause the cost of those uh, activities to go up. It'll have to be borne by the users. So um, when we do have events in the facility, when there's a rental, the renter is paying for the security, not the city. Mm -hmm. well, okay. All right. Uh, is there anyone else that would like to comment on this <clears throat> item? If not, I'll bring it back to the council for direction. Yeah. 
I move to approve resolution number 2020-42. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Can we have the roll call vote, please? Council Member Condit. Aye. Council Member Durasset. Yes. Vice Mayor Rhino. Yes. Council Member Klein. Yes. And Mayor Vieira. Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you. We have no unfinished business this evening, no public hearing and no new business. So we'll move to the discussion item, COVID-19 discussion and direction of verbal report um, from Mr. Westbrook. Yeah, just a couple of things, Mayor, I'll just touch on um, quickly. Uh, today, the total number of cases for COVID-19 in series stays at 59. Um, overall, there was a seven, um, seven positive tests today. You've probably seen over the last week or two, there, there's been more positive tests. That's a result of more tests being taken. Um, the Slide Library has a testing facility. There's one in Keys and there's also one in Patterson. And so the daily number of tests they can do um, is kind of approaching the 250 to 300 um, number. And so as a result of that, we're seeing more positive tests. To kind of get back to Mr. Yakely's question about the masks, um, Dr. V, who is our local public health officer, is in encouraging people to wear masks when out in public, but it is not a requirement. So if there is a place of business in our community that wants to require masks, they can do so do so. Um, they don't have to, uh, they can be a little more stringent than that. Um, I know that there are some businesses within Stanislaus County that have done that. Um, they're requiring masks for people to come in those facilities. Um, so just uh, moving forward uh, in this COVID pandemic, um, uh, obviously new things change every day from the federal government and the state government. Um, we were hopeful, staff was hopeful that this week the governor of California would be releasing some guidelines for kind of the starting opening up of some of our business, uh, primarily restaurants. It doesn't look like that may materialize. He was hopeful to do that tomorrow. So hopefully by the end of the week, maybe there'll be some guidance uh, because we sure would like to share that with our business community um, so that we can get them uh, back to some normalcy. Um, staff, as we get updates from the state of California and the feds, we are sending those through the Chamber of Commerce so they can reach out to their membership. Uh, one of the things I mentioned at the last meeting about um, COVID-19 and not really knowing when this pandemic is going to end, um, we do have two summertime programs that have been pretty popular in the past, one of those being aquatics and the other being day camps. Um, Dr. B specifically was asked, uh, thanks to Mayor Vieira, about uh, aquatics programs in Stanislaus County. She was encouraging those folks that had uh, plans to start moving forward with their aquatics program. Um, and hopefully by the time uh, that the summer rolled around and those uh, programs were ready to take flight, that there would be some uh, either, either guidelines or the restrictions lifted so that we could have the aquatics program. So staff is going to move forward with both our day camps and our aquatics, at least through the hiring process. Um, if it appears that we cannot uh, actually uh, employ those people, then we won't be training them or doing anything else. We'll just uh, stop with the recruitment and cancel those programs. But we'd like to at least offer that up um, to some of our folks in series who have been homebound. Uh, and we certainly believe that the aquatics program is a, is a vitally important thing uh, to be able to teach our children how to swim around the water. So uh, unless there was any other uh, specific questions, mayor or council members, that concludes my report. Thank you. Does anyone in the council have any questions for Tom? Okay. All right. Um, with that, we will move to council member referrals. Is there anyone <clears throat> in the council that would like an item placed on a future agenda? Okay. Hearing none, um, we'll move to reports. Uh, I have nothing to report. Uh, council member Klein? Nothing. Vice Mayor Rhino? Yes, um, last week I was downtown waiting for a takeout dinner from Pastas Pronto and it wasn't quite ready. So I'm standing outside and looking around and what do I see but a bunch of big weeds out in our flower beds. And you know how I am about weeds. They were just like <laughs> taunting me. So while I'm waiting, I decided I'd start pulling weeds, which I pulled quite a few and that got me to thinking that I drove up and down the street and it isn't just like one little section. There's like the whole street is full of weeds. So on Saturday at 7.30 by 7.30, I will be out there pulling weeds if anyone wants to join me. And that would be 
anyone that's listening to Zoom, all you need to bring is gloves because they're icky, sticky, they're horrible weeds. They're not, they're, they're just awful. Um, but I'll be out there at 7.30 pulling and anybody is welcome to come out and join me and I'll try and get as much done as I can, but I don't know. I don't think it's gonna be as hard as the Rose Garden was when Sam and I did that. Okay, Council Member Drossett? Nothing. Council Member Condit? I have nothing to report this evening. Okay, with that, we'll start with staff. Um, uh, Ms. Diaz? I have nothing, Mayor. Tom? Nothing to report, Mayor. Mr. Westbrook? Yes, I have a couple of things. Um, wanted to let the council know that we're getting into the season of fireworks, um, the safe and sane fireworks. Um, I know that uh, Chief Wise is getting some requests from our locals, uh, nonprofit groups about selling fireworks. Um, at this point in time, it seems that Dr. V is going to allow that to happen, the selling of the safe and sane fireworks, obviously with social distancing. It does appear that the county, if they had any uh, large shows planned, like they have at Woodward Reservoir, those will likely be canceled. Uh, but they are going to allow uh, the sale of fireworks. I also know that uh, Chief Wise and I think um, probably Chief Collins or Captain uh, Crane at your next meeting will be giving you a little bit of a presentation about uh, the kind of the illegal, illegal fireworks campaign. Um, to date, we were planning on doing that again. Fourth of July falls on a Saturday this year, so it's probably going to be fairly active. Um, just also wanted to mention that Measure H, there's two vacancies that are up. Applications will be accepted uh, tomorrow through June 5th um, for anyone who's interested in the uh, Measure H committee. And then the last thing I wanted to mention to the council is the budget workshop. I know that I've talked to some of the council members individually. Um, the desire was to kind of be able to meet in person so that we could go through the budget. Um, and I was having a target date of uh, May 27th, so that would be after your next city council meeting to do that. Um, just wanted to kind of get a pulse of the council if if ever would be would be ready um, that week or if we should schedule another date. Uh, but Letitia and I are working feverishly to get that out. We know that the council would like to have the um, the budget packet a week ahead of time, so we're trying to be sensitive and getting it to you on uh, May 20th at the latest. So uh, is the 27th of May work for everyone? What time would that be? Um, can be whenever we wish, uh, Mayor Rhino, at, uh, Vice Mayor Rhino. It could be at 5, 5.30. Um, I think 5.30 was last year when we when we held that. And then the, the concept is trying to probably spread us out in the community center, um, in, our, in our council chambers, uh, maybe giving everyone their own little six foot table um, to try to do that. But having um, uh, the department heads, um, and key staff members uh, being able to be there to answer some of the questions from council. So um, if the 27th looks good, then we will start planning on that um, and hope to shoot for that date. I'm okay with the 27th. I'm okay. 5.30 work for everyone? That should work. Yes. Yes. Okay. Even five o'clock, I don't know about anyone else, but I'm okay with five. I can go at nine. I'm off school. <laughs> you, you're not going to start back on June 1st? Oh, June 1st. Okay. Does the members of the council, the five o'clock works for everyone, then we can do five o'clock. That works. That'll okay. work. Fine. Then tentatively, we're scheduling for five o'clock on May 27th for the budget workshop. And that's all I had. Okay. Mr. Padilla? I have nothing. Okay, Kevin. Chief Weiss. Can you hear me? Are you able to hear me? A little bit. <laughs> kind of cutting out. Cutting in and out. Um, I tried a different Wi-Fi this week too. <laughs> you, you sound, Kevin. Sound like a video game. Our fire apparatus should be in the state of California by this Friday. The first two. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. We can't. We can't hear you. He, he put on mute, so I think he's done. All I heard was that fire apparatus are on their way to California. 
So. Okay, great. Uh, Mr. Collins? I have nothing to report, Mayor. You hear me? <laughs> nothing, Mayor. <there. laughs> We're laughing with you, Chief Wise, not at you. So. Um, Aaron? Thanks, tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Matt? Yeah, as we receive guidelines from the CDC for reopening our facilities, our staff are just working with those guidelines, making sure we have the supplies and materials and the training to handle um, kind of what Tom talked about, um, the aquatics in our day camps. So um, as those come down even with more detail, we'll be implementing them and getting ready for that, reopening our facilities. Okay, thank you. And uh, Robert, I don't know if you want to chime in with anything. I have nothing, Mayor. Thank you. Okay. I didn't see Supervisor Demartini, so I think I – did I miss anybody? I don't think so. I think I got everybody. So with that, um, we will adjourn to our next regular meeting, which will be on Tuesday. It's, it's actually going to be Tuesday, May 26th because of the holiday. Correct, Tom? Correct. You're correct, sir. Okay. So with that, um, everybody have a safe evening, and we will uh, see you on the 26th. Thank you.